Hey guys, welcome to Rock Customs. I'm your host, Patrick Rapolo, and on this episode, we're going to be making a Daredevil helmet. Now, this helmet's actually based on the Daredevil Netflix series, which I think they did an excellent job with, so if you haven't seen it, I do recommend checking it out. Okay, guys, so I have a kit as well as templates for download. If you're interested in either one of those, you can find links in the description area below. Now, as far as difficulty, guys, on a scale from 1 to 10, I'm going to give this a 2, 2.5. It's actually one of the easier builds I've done so far. Now, whether you go with the kit or with the templates, either way, you're going to need some lenses. I recommend just picking up some cheap sunglasses. I picked these up at the dollar store and was lucky enough to find these uh, fire style lenses, which I actually installed in the helmet. And I think it gives it a really cool look. Really happy with the way uh, these fire lenses actually accent the helmet itself. Now, once your helmet's built and painted and ready to go, uh, it may be a little loose or not fit close tight to the face. You can actually get some polyfoam. Now, this is like a polyfoam that you'd use for a uh, cushion for furniture, uh, basically. But you can actually get some hot glue and just glue it into the back side of the helmet. And when, when you have that in there, it'll pull it tight to your face if that's the look you're going for. Uh, you can also put it in the sides or front or wherever you need it to to get the helmet to fit just the way you need it to on your head. Now, to actually, if you're going to make a costume with, with this, I'd recommend, you know, sewing a little underhood right here with those earpieces. But just for something as simple and to show you how it accents pretty easily, just having a hoodie here and putting this on, you can actually see how much that enhances just the look and that's just using a simple hoodie so you know if you wanted to make it better and actually if you can sew you know and actually sew in those ear styles that they have on the show that would be awesome if you do i would love to see some photos of it all right guys let's get to the build and see how to build a daredevil helmet recommended tools and supplies for this build are the kit or the templates if you use the templates you'll need two sheets of five millimeter eva foam for glue i recommend contact cement plasti dip to seal your phone spray paint a pair of cheap sunglasses a rotary tool a heat gun glue gun a razor knife and an airbrush if you have one the kit comes with two side rib sections, two side pieces, two back side pieces, the front center section, top center, and the back center section, the face piece, the sections for the horns, and the nose guard for the bridge of the nose. To start, grab the inside rib section and the side pieces. Round over all the top edges on the side piece. I recommend using a grinding stone bit. Next, use a heat gun to heat the side piece. Then form it over something round. Press straight down on your piece and try not to stretch it. Next, heat the inside rib section. When heating your pieces, I recommend heating the bottom side first then flipping them over and heating the top side. Once the piece is heated, form it over something round and hold it in place until the foam cools. Once the foam cools, it will hold its shape. To glue your pieces together, I recommend using contact cement. Apply your glue to the rib section on the top surface area along the inside reference line and on the bottom surface area of the side piece along the edge all the way around. Then allow the glue to set up. This is usually around five minutes. Press the side piece in place on the rib, starting at the front top corner, and work your way down the front edge. Then work your way along the top edge, working from the front to back. You can use your fingers to hold a gap between the bottom edge of the side and the rib piece while you align the top edge. Then you can line up the bottom edge and press your pieces together.
On the top front section, the side with the lines is the bottom. On the top side, use your rotary tool to round over the outside edges at the back and the inside corner sections at the front. Once your edges are rounded over, heat your piece and form it over something round. Next, apply glue to the top surface area of the rib section. At the front, apply it along the reference line, starting from your center hash mark, and along the top reference line. You can cover the entire surface area on the flap area. On the front top section, apply glue to the bottom surface area. Once the glue set, bend the flap down on the side section. Then line up the front end of the top piece with the hash at the front of the side section. Then press your pieces together following the reference line along the front and side corner. There's a hash at the back top edge. Use your fingers to hold a gap between the rib section and the top piece. Then line up the back edge of the top with your hash mark on the side. Then press your pieces together working your way from the back to the front keeping the top lined up with the reference line. Once you get to the flap, you can let it roll out and glue it to the bottom of the top piece. Next, take the back side sections and round over the top edge from the V section at the front and along the front, bottom, and back edge. Now heat the piece and form it over something round. Apply glue to the rib section along the bottom and top reference line and apply glue to the top back edge. On the back side piece, apply glue to the bottom surface area along the front edge and to the front edge at the V section. Now fold down the back of the rib section and press the edges from the back and front section together. Then pull the rib section up, then glue your back piece in place following the reference line. Next, grab the center top piece and round over the back edge and the back side edge up to the angled line. Heat and form your piece over something round. I recommend applying two coats of glue on all edges. Apply glue to the outside edge of the center piece all the way around. On the front top piece, apply glue to the inside edge all the way around. Glue your center piece in place starting at the front. Work your way from one side to the other, keeping the top edges flush. Then press your side edges together, working your way from the front to the back. The back edge of the side piece should line up with the angle line on the center piece.
on the back piece round over the top bottom edge. Heat your piece and form it over something round. Apply glue to the front and side edges. On the main body of the helmet, apply glue to all the inside edges at the back. Press your pieces together starting with your center edges. Then work your way to the side and along the back outside edge, gluing your pieces together from the front to the back. Next we'll be bending the eye section along the engraved line on the inside of the helmet. Heat the front of the helmet along the top of the eye sockets. Bend the top of the eye down along the engraved line. Once you have your bend, you can pinch the foam flat. With the foam pinched flat, slightly bend the fold up to form an eyebrow lip. On the front nose guard, you'll want to round over the bottom eye sections, from the bottom of the point on the side to the top peak of the curve. You'll also want to round over the outside edge on both sides and along the bottom. Now you'll want to heat this section and form it. You can use a mannequin head for this. If you don't have one, you can use your own face. Just make sure the foam's not hot enough to burn you. Next, take the bridge of the nose and heat it. The engraved edge goes to the back side. Curve the piece in from top to bottom and bend the bottom edge up along the engraved line. Apply glue to the top and side edges and along the bottom surface area. Apply glue to the front of the helmet along the inside edges, along the reference lines on the rib section, on the outside edge of the front piece, and to the bottom edge of the front piece from the end to the top of the eye. On the nose guard, apply glue to the inside edges at the V sections and to the top edge above the nose. Apply glue to the bottom surface area along the outside and top edge. Press the bridge of the nose in place starting in the center, then working your way down the sides. Glue the nose guard in place starting on one side. Bend the rib section down and glue the edges of the nose guard to the front piece. Then let the rib come up and glue the edge of the nose guard down following the reference line. Then glue your second side in place.
Now you can glue the nose guard to the bridge of the nose. Line up the bottom inside edges and press your pieces together. Alright guys, so you got three pieces for each horn. They are marked left and right. You have LF for left front, LS for left side, and LB for left back. And the line lets you know that's the bottom. And the letters face to the inside. Heat the front section and bend it into a U shape. Apply glue to the inside surface area on both sides. On the left side, apply glue to the front edge and the back surface area. On the back piece, apply glue to both side edges. On the side piece, glue the front edge to the back surface area of the front. Start at the bottom and work your way to the top and keep the outside edges flush. Now glue the back piece to the side starting at the bottom. Then glue it to the front piece, working away from the bottom to the top. Once your horns glued together, you can use your rotary tool to clean up your seams and round over your edges. The front bottom edge is angled, so you'll need to use your rotary tool to flatten the edge out so that it will fit flush on top of the helmet. To make the seams disappear, you can use gel super glue along the seam, spread it thin and then sand it smooth. Then you can apply a thin coat of glazing putty and then it can be sanded smooth. Next apply glue to the top of the helmet where the horns will set and to the bottom edges of the horns. Once the glue set, line up the back outside edge of the horn with the back outside edge of the helmet and then press the horn down in place. To seal the helmet, I recommend using Plasti Dip. I like to apply two light coats followed by two heavy coats. Once your Plasti Dip's dry, you can apply two base coats of paint. For the details, I like to use an airbrush, but you could use a paintbrush as well. To finish off the paint job, I recommend using two coats of clear paint. For the lenses, I recommend picking up a cheap pair of sunglasses. Remove the lenses from the frames and line them up in place inside the helmet. You can use tape to hold the lenses in place, then use a hot glue gun to permanently keep them in place. Well, all right, guys, there you go, the Daredevil helmet. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. If you have any questions about it, please leave them in the comment area below, and I will do my best to answer them for you. Now, this is the first build of 2020. I'm so far behind on what I've been wanting to get out for you guys. I'm trying to finish up some of the tutorials I've been working on. Uh, like the tactical armor belt and the chest. I'm actually wanting to put when I put the chest out I actually give like three sizes in the uh, chest armor uh, So that it would be able to fit more of you guys and make it easier for y'all uh, Once I put all that out now, I actually just finished filming uh, The tutorial for the Wolverine helmet. So that's one that I'm still working on and I finished up the corrections on the Captain America helmet which I did this one, but I still need to make another one and film the tutorial as well for that. And I finally finished up painting and everything on the Shore Trooper armor. So I'm just about done with everything on that, getting all that out for you guys. 
So while I was cleaning everything up, I went ahead and drug out the old Iron Man armor that I started on uh, with plans to get back to work on this. This way, it's I got a visual on it. I can start looking at it and figuring out what I want to change, the improvements I want to make, and just uh, trying to figure out how to make it more adjustable. All right, guys, so that's it for now. Uh, God bless, and I'll see you on the next one.